Hello friends, welcome to Intuits. Let's begin the class. So let's today discuss about index. Samir, one more thing. Yesterday's uh, only video came, the notes we didn't get. Oh, was it? Okay. I will... One second. Let me share it right away. Otherwise, I'll forget again. I send it the notes in the yesterday class. Thank you, Samir. Let's discuss about the index. So, index, practically, there is nothing much on this. Okay. But you need to, concept-wise, you need to understand. And as a, like, uh, the business analyst professional or data analyst professionals who should know the concept of the index why it is required and how all the things so basically index very simple right whenever in day-to-day -day life we are doing the indexing whenever you are going to a supermarket also we are doing one two three four five six items or we are keeping in a notebook or whatever the app you are using to-do list or even in a we are right reading the books right so all things are properly indexed so the better way to search that is called the index right suppose you have an enormous of data and from out of that the search criteria the search patterns you want to simplify the process and you don't want to take uh, give so much burden to your system then index will be helpful here. so that's why the index is there so now in case of database there are two types of index are available one is your clustered index and another one is called your non cluster index okay so there are two clustered and non cluster okay so if i talked about in a diagrammatic way for the cluster and non cluster so let's take i have the id name the age let's take so one two three four so this is a table let's take employee table and you have started entering the data for the id and id is let's take an example of id is a cluster in how to create it or how it can be created i will i will come to the come to that later on this stage but let's understand that let's take the id column is a clustered index and when you are inserting the data to this one like insert into table name right you started inserting like this let's take one four three two this is the way you inserted a data a b c Let's take well 23, 34, and 45. This is the insertion you have done. But since we applied a clustered index to this, how it will it will store into the physical way? It will automatically sort this table in case of clustered index. So this will be one, this will be two, this will be three, this will be four. And based on that, ABCD also will change. Okay. So what is happening in the cluster index? The order which you inserted, whatever the order you insert the data, if that column is declared as clustered index or it got created, then when after insertion, it will give you a sort order automatically by the database. Okay. For the first search. Let's see this example on this. And clustered index automatically, when you have declared a primary key on your table, right? It is automatically a clustered index. Auto apply. Okay. So let's get through an example let's say create table employee underscore index so i will take employee id and i into e name varka let's take 50 and h and simple table Let's create this. Now, this thing that I have not declared this as a primary key right now. Okay. Just think like that. I'm not declaring anything on the employee. ID. Now, I will insert the record. Insert into your employee index. Values. Let's check one. ABC. Let's check 20. It's my first record okay now think like that while inserting after one i'm inserting three okay i'm not maintaining the sequence here okay five then let's take four then i'm not taking the order as two Okay, so the four four columns I have ordered. Now, if I do select star from my employee underscore index table, 
let's try to fix this state and see the order which you enter you started with one then three then four then two right this is the order it maintained normally this is the normal case got the point so this is when you do not declare any kind of cluster index because when you we didn't declare this as a primary key or any of the column is not declared as a primary correct so let's now drop this table this makes sense up to here it is clear yes anybody have any question so now let's take drop table and just one second i'm dropping this table again got dropped now i am declaring this as a primary key okay now i'm creating this table all right now when you declare the primary key now i'm inserting the records one three four now when you start selecting this data see the data changes the order of a descending order sorted see the difference you saw the difference right yes Makes sense. So this is why it is happening because when you declare a column as a primary key, so what happened? Let me refresh this. And when you expand your database, expand your tables after employee demo, where employee after employee demo, employee index left side third one after EMP. Yeah, no, no, no. yeah, it's okay. It's employee index. So if you click expand the indexes, index. in the particular thing so automatically one primary key index got created and it is cluster you see this is a cluster make sense so automatically whenever you declared a primary key it is a clustered index and the behavior of the clustered index is something like it will create what is the order you insert the data it will automatically sort the records uh, on ascending whatever the order it got entered doesn't matter but it will sort the order and it will give you the data and one thing we need to remember in this case is in this whole table right in this database or in this in this particular table only one will be your clustered index why because because it is based on a sort order right so the sort order is defined so we can't provide another uh, what you called cluster index and the logic also we can't have a multiple primary key right on the same page so we can't have a multiple cluster index so this is the first behavior of your cluster index any questions on this you can ask are you good on this part hello yes. now let's understand the non cluster index So let's take on the long cluster index. You inserted like this. Okay. So same thing we have inserted. Okay. But in this case, what happened is it will create a lookup table actually. Lookup information or lookup table, I can say. where all the records wherever the index is defined so let's say this is my id right so id one two three four it will be sorted along with their address address in the sense where it is getting stored inside the memory right so somewhere this record is getting stored physically right that address will be captured here so suppose like uh, something like that not the exact address, but I'm just keeping it hexadecimal code. So whenever you are searching for a record of ID number one, then it will refer to the lookup table, and from there it will get the address, and from there it will fetch the data. Okay, so you will say why it is required. Suppose think like that only four records are there you felt like there will be a million and billions of trillions of data is there okay and you are putting a search condition like felix on uh, this 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 record from my table where id equals to two so it should search if you not have a proper index mechanism so it will search for the whole table right whole trillions of record will search and from there it will get the two records so it will be hell number of times it will take so if you have a proper kind of index mechanism then it will just search for the address and where it is print it will directly go there and it will get you the data so by that time the performance will get faster okay so this is the way it works let's see how to create the non cluster index basic idea you got it or any questions so this part is your clustered part and this part is your non cluster part any questions you can ask why will it take more time if you take where condition okay i will tell you suppose you have a book of a 500 or 
thousand pages. I will I will ask you. You don't have the first page where it is the subject line is the index. So index. think like that is not not there. Okay, which page contains which story is not there. I will ask you something like where is the Harry Potter? The where is where is getting the magic bites or what? Is, how you will get it without looking at that uh, the things index? What you call it, the ref, the reference? How we can okay. go to the page number twenty five and get that information? Is it possible? Not possible, yeah. right? Without otherwise you need to read everything. Then only mm. we will get mm. right. The same thing applies here only. So suppose I have a billions of Trillions of records, and you are saying database to boss go and find the ID number two. He is not a he is not a like a Superman, right? Mm -hmm. He is a machine anyway. So he will go and search. So all the all records it will be searched, full table it will be searched, and whatever you find, whatever it found, it will keep. It. So if you say that one million of search is happening for a simple where condition, the performance will start degrading, right? For the okay. performance, don't you think so? Yeah, yeah, got it. Make sense? So now let's drop this. Now I will not create any index here. I will not define this as a primary key. Normal table I will create. Okay. And I will insert the records. Now I will create the non-cluster index. So normally how you are creating your table, right? The same way we can create the index as well. So I will create, create index and you need to give the name so let's take idx employee underscore id just giving a name the index just like the create table name right that's it okay create table index on the particular table make sense then on which column on which table we want to create it that we need to define it here okay so it's something like i can define the table name so employee underscore employee underscore index inside that i need to give the column that's it so it will create why this is red color is coming we have created the employee index table right okay anyway that's fine so now i will create an index here sorry on on into right so now on the employee id there is an index called created the name is idx employee id let's refresh this and go to the table and employee index expand it go to the indexes and if you see here this is a non cluster make sense it is not a cluster the last time when you created a primary key it was cluster now it is a non cluster okay now see the difference how the search mechanism will work for that let's Let's do that. So I will say where uh, employee underscore ID equals to two. Search for a search. I'm doing it. You are running like this, right? Execute. You can right click on this selection of the query. Then where is that option? This one. Ah, this one. Sorry. The control L, the disabled estimated execution plan. So if you press control L, it will show you the execution plan of any query in the database. It will show you how it is performing, where it is going, all these things. I click on this. You see here, it will show you why it is doing a table scan here. We already created an index, right? Mm. It's not good. I've created an employee ID only. Now okay, let's let's do something. What is the other name we have? Cost hundred percent. It's not good. Name equals to let's take X Y G. Let me check. Control L. Mm, I'm not too sure on this. This should be there. Will be one lookup table should come here. Maybe the number of records is very less. That's why it is not coming. Or uh, I'm not sure on this one. But let's let's do one thing otherwise. Just give me a second. Let's take the orders table. Try to get on index there. How many records I have? Let's try that. So normally, let's take select so start from order where order underscore id equals to. Suppose I'm searching for this and. Okay, now let's take it is going for a hundred percent table scan here, and let's create an index here. Create index order 
idx order underscore id on order order underscore id okay let's create an index here for the order table oh, let, let me refresh this now let's try to search for this record hopefully it should give me the required result which i'm expecting if you see that time what happened was there was very less data was there okay so it was not coming up now you see the difference here it is looking for the lookup table okay where when you create the index for the order id every order id is kept is just like an index here, just like a lookup table all the indexes are all the order IDs here and with their address okay and it is going to the lookup table and get the data instead of normal table scan right uh, confused or it's okay yes it's okay or you're confused or i'm there i'm audible yeah uh, yes. actually it might take uh to like a little bit uh, i mean are we are listen, going to listen again recording it will be more clear you know mm. okay so normally what happen is when you normally let's take select star for an employee index let's think like this is a okay normally suppose you want to go for select star from your returns table Let me check what is the column map. Okay. So here, suppose you are searching for where order ID, I don't know what is the name of this column, order space ID. In a box. You have to write. Yes, I know that. Oops box i need to write but what is the name of this order id equals to let's take search for any order here let me check first whether it is coming or not coming yeah so when we are running this and press ctrl l so it is going to so many cost is happening so i don't want that uh, let's do that in under other, other tab only just one second so if you see this this return table it is doing a full table scan full table scan means in the sense it will go for all the records for the particular how many rows i have it will go there and it will search for your data this is not good when there is a full table scan is happening for the table because what will happen if you are using this in your any of the environment in the lower environment right any reporting environment you are doing it or where we are consuming the data from the table processing the data from the table so it will slow down your performance because it is scanning the whole table complete all the table all the rows right so this is normal when we, when we don't have any index mechanism for the table but when you create a table on the order id you see i have created an index on my order table by based on my order table order right now from the order table when i'm searching this and i'm pressing this control l here it is not doing a table scan right so some join whatever things are happening that is fine but it is seeing the so lookup is coming up what is the lookup here index if is, is something like it is just creating and whenever you are creating an uh, index on a particular column which is a non-cluster in nature then it will create a separate memory in the structure with sorted data and whenever you are doing a search on that particular column then it will go to this particular table the lookup table there it will search it and go to that particular memory and it will give you the result back okay make sense any any questions on this do you have any questions guys samir what is cost is there they have written nested loops uh -huh. um, cost is yeah cost is not the money here the cost time? is the execution cost uh -huh. yes execution time. cost yeah. okay yeah execution cost in the sense how much time it is consuming how it is behaving all these things so Can yeah I... go ahead and, and yeah good when i'm doing where clause alone without index mm -hmm. i'm getting the cost to be 100 directly without a lookup table being generated uh when you don't have any uh Suppose indexing being index. done no mm. without with where clause yeah with where clause okay yeah uh the cost 
the cost was 100 i don't know i so but yeah. when you did index you're getting an extra lookup table right. and That's uh, that also giving you divided cost is coming as to be 100 only uh, one is 38 another no, no. one is 62 42 no no this cost is not that one so yeah. how i can explain you that 100 percent is not the exact like execution cost what i'm saying is that the search patterns how okay. you are search the records so okay. how much time it is taking so it is it's a cluster index it is going to this and just giving back so what is happening in this case is that you can say uh, don't go on the deep side so in this something like uh, when you have an index on your column your search pattern will be faster compared to the normal one when you have a huge set of records on a table and we have a search patterns on your table with an index then your retrieval of the records will be faster compared to the non-index one that's what that is the one and few things we need to remember two points we need to remember here when you are creating index too many indexes on a table also degrade the performance it is not like every column needs to be indexed no the column which is being used as a filter or which could be used as a filter on your let's take you have a report okay either in a power bi or tableau or wherever you are using the reporting environment there you have a set of filters suppose you are going to a website right so you are having some search patterns right i i can search by my name i can search by my age or search by country or something the search buttons are there right so the thing is we need to decide which are the column can be used on the lower system as a search pack those are the items you could keep in the index right then your performance will be started that's the important thing it's not like every column okay i have performance is good with the index let's do it over everything no index again if you uh, more than one index again it will slow down the performance why because each and time it will go to the memory search it and get back search it and get back so if you multiple indexes available then your performance also will start so you need to be very careful on this part, okay and even uh, one thing we have a inbuilt store procedures let me check what i forgot the name of the store procedure so let's click on the program availability store procedure system store procedure actually in sql server that is called let me check huh? something like dfthi -D indexes index or help index i think are you able to see any help index guys from my, from my screen can you just help me with it are you able to see any help index yeah this one exactly so you can execute execute the store procedure means ex ec i'll come to this after that how to create the store procedure so execute then i will say sp underscore help index then table name okay so i will say employee underscore index let's execute this it will give you the list of indexes available for that particular table this make it a note this this storage procedure is a system defined source procedure along with the installation of your sql server it will come up and if we want to see uh, how many indexes or what are the indexes available for a particular table they can use you can use this tool procedure so execute your source procedure name then your table so you can give will come up like how many indexes are available okay simple make sense is that okay Yes. And any questions you have? And have you guys tried with the delete? Then yesterday I showed you the update. Uh, the update how we can do the joins, how we can do the subquery on the update. You try with the delete as well. No, Samir will do it tomorrow. I could only complete the backlog of the class. So okay, tomorrow. how many backlogs do you guys have? How much? Just yesterday's class. Okay, about others. Me too. Uh, yesterday's class. Only that is the backlog. Okay. And what about the assignments? Yeah, hi, this is uh, Nidhi Samir. I, I have done so far only four, uh, four assignments. Uh, I have to do all the other assignments. Yeah. Yeah. You must keep on four. So I think I have given you all, all the eight assignments, right? Right, right. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So eight assignments. I think another two I will give you after the class okay. today. So you okay. need to complete all the whole ten. Okay. Yeah okay fine all right then then try to understand one more concept is called your what is a view exactly view is i can say it's a replica of a table okay 
why view is more important in your real time world is something like so as i know as you know that we will not able to create any table or uh, as our role part of the role will fit into the environment right rarely we'll get a chance to create any table you don't have the rights to create the table in real world okay unless you are a dba or you are a support team or you are supporting any environment then chances are there then we'll have a chance to create the table on the request from the developer side since we are part of the data engineering world so we'll rarely we'll have the chances of creating the table and why view is required view is required because let's think uh, in a diff two cases first case is suppose you are working for a, a finance organization and they are have all the sensitive information is there across different teams okay there is a asset information is there there is a uh, stock information is there then there is a uh, suppose let's take any kind of bonds mutual funds all the all the information is there capturing in one table that is called your uh, your finance information and you are supposed to be a part of a team handling only the asset information okay just try to think like that now if somebody has given you access to that particular table then you will able to see asset information stock information mutual fund everything you will able to see right is that good in a real world in this case is fine but that is not possible they will not allow also that that, that scenario because you should not see the data which is not applicable to you right so on that end what i will do here do i need to create three different tables here is it ideal scenario can somebody answer me this question i exp i given you a scenario to you what you will do if this scenario comes up for you just think like that are you getting my question where where is the point you are not able to understand the scenario of three different tables or like with respect to what you are asking that you don't understand suppose let's think like you have a table okay in that all the information is available so let's take on your let's think like your table is your personal information okay your personal information table have everything of yours like how much you invested how much you uh, put it in the bonds how much you buy the uh, your stocks and your all the personal information and you think like okay i am not able to maintain my investment or whatever i am doing my stock i want to give this to a third party to handle that so you have a table and you want to give the permission to only to check how much you invested how much the stock amount is for you that they want to access it so you have a table of containing all the information so you will give that access complete information to the third party or only the required information they require we give the only the required information or only the permission the required is given for only the required information permission right so in this case we have in table we have three different three or four different kinds of information i have so what i will do i will create four tables in one of the table i will give them permission to them or we'll do something else that was the question what your thoughts here so one table will contain your personal information one your stock information one your bond information what is something else information and whichever is table is required i will give the permission to them see you can create a view and then mm. based on the requirement okay so suppose you want to join two table create a view also or two table three table whatever it may be you can join and create a one view now i'm, okay. I'm not asking that i think my question is if i come i'll come to that this is first scenario i'm discussing about the view that's the second scenario which you are talking about first scenario is this sensitive information so when you have a sensitive information on your table nobody will give the access to that particular table they will create a view on top of that and you will give you the information to that so we will not have access to the table this is this is the first point of creating the view second point is when you have a reusability code suppose i have a scenario where i am using daily i want to get how many return order from my table so i can write the query like 
let's start from this this column from the order left join with returns and return id null null that query i want to execute daily suppose i want i have a responsibility to get that information so on that reusability things also i can create my these are the two points where the view is very much required okay the first point is is called your sensitivity information sensitivity data second is your reusability reusability it comes up anything any query okay it includes windows function anything whatever you learn subquery joins whatever you want to put it but but the thing is you need to think like that code can be reusable and it is required for me then i can create a view out of that so that i no need to write each and every time that code so that i can create a view out of that i can use on my system okay this two point is clear then i will see how to create it creating view is very simple thing nothing there Does this make sense mm. okay now how to create the view two points you got it what is sensitivity data and what is reusability these are the two points where the view will be get created you should be make sure on this okay very simple okay create view view name that's it and always we follow the syntax so when you are creating a table you can give any table name but for the view it should always start with the vw okay so let's take vw underscore uh, return orders let's take for example okay as i can give select whatever i want to do here so let's take from my orders left join returns on whatever you, you want to just do it let's let's do that select or let's give a name o r o dot star then r dot star from my order table on o dot what are the what are the columns i have guys order right order, ID. order underscore id order underscore id okay equals to r dot uh, order id, ID yeah? yeah with space yeah okay that's it right so i'm just taking a view so let's pass execute this which is working or not working let me see yeah we are, we are getting this this record and we can put a condition as well right where r dot order id or r dot written region whatever you want to put it you can put it as null right this is the basic query we can write it you can put joins everything whatever you want to do it so let's execute this right and you got this information now on this one we can uh, summarize also whatever the column you want that also you can specify so after creating of this query we can create on view on top of this okay Create view view name as select. Now let's execute this. So now my command complete successfully. Now let's this one. On this one, if we expand the views button, there will be one view will be created that is called VW return orders. Okay. Now I can use directly just like my table only. Select star from VW underscore return orders. and it will give you the exact result which you want where it's null without writing this code each and every time that is called your reusability the code reusability so when you will use this that's what whenever there is a requirement comes up and from the particular tables like i have a three four tables i have and i want to join 
I want to do group by, I want to do subquery to get the results. And that code, whatever I'm writing the code, right, the written code, I want to reuse. So I can create a view on top of that. I can reuse this. This is the purpose of the view. That makes sense. Did that make sense? Yeah, that's it. And don't think like this is a table. So whenever you are selecting from a view, actually it's underlined this query only it is executed because this is comes under that view one. Each and every time whenever you are uh, uh, hitting the view, no, it is going to the uh, whatever the code I have written for the creating of the view. And there I have the SQL and it is getting fired only. That's it. And so only thing is you are not writing the SQL each and every time. That is the that is the that is the thing. Make sense? This is very important. Okay, and you, uh, you will have the responsibility because the profile which you are going for the data engineer, you will definitely create the views for you because uh, that is required because our job is to create the view here. Table is fine, but you will create the view with lots of ways. Okay, it makes sense. Amir, once again, can you repeat why do we need a uh, views? Uh, though uh, re uh, reusability, sensitivity of data, yes, but why do we need the views? Okay, suppose you have a reusability code, uh, so hmm. each and every time you will write the code for you. Oh, okay. how each and every time you will write the select, join, all these things you will write. Nearly impossible, oh. right? Uh, got it. So just create a code for that and put it in something else. That the container is just a view. And sensitivity information is something like uh, table have a sensitivity information, and uh, organization don't want to give the permission directly on the table for you. Okay, and uh, they they will create a out of a view for that, and they will give you the required permission. So something like suppose. Let's take this order table have some sensitive information. They will put a where condition. This required that. Then they will create out of a view. Then they will give you. You can use it. So so that you will not get exposure to the other data, which is not required for you as well. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm saying that in real time when you go to the SQL Server, right? This is the way it will work. This table, when you expand it, right, you will get nothing. You will get nothing there. So it doesn't mean that there is no table on this one. Table is there, but you don't have a permission to use that. And this will be managed by the DBS. Okay. And when you expand your views, only the required views also only available for you. And sometimes there are some tables which is less sensitive, and your organization have the permission to give you that there will get some table information as well but on the table we will not have the uh, uh, permission to insert delete or update only select permission will be there on the table as well so these are the things will take care by your dbs so you no need to worry on that that makes sense so don't get confused whenever you have a expand in a real time and you are not able to get any tables it doesn't mean that there are some table, but you don't have access. Okay. This so makes you sense. mean to say that only we have view, only uh, we will be getting no, no, to see view. No, it's not like that. You will get tables as well sometimes, uh -huh. but that in that table, if you are getting a table, we will not have a insert, delete, update operation. We will have only select. Select. That also restriction will be there, and you don't have a table means your organization is restricting to access your table and based on that they will create the view of out of that two things can be possible okay so when we uh, double click the view we get only the output right yes correct double so, click in the uh, i mean we select it i mean uh -huh, yeah just when we write select star from huh. And now you can use this. This view is normal table only. 
how you are using and, the table and then you write a query depending upon the yeah yeah requirement same, same. Okay. yeah correct yeah okay. same after case of the view it is more of a like a table only nothing new there is no we can do this view we can join with another view you can write sub query order by group by your windows function whatever you learn you can do it no no matters on that so it's after creation it's as simple as that so okay? this is an indirect table for us to do any work on it correct is yes, that's correct it's like a indirect okay. table without direct table exposure we are just creating that okay all right and one more thing this i want to explain you one more time let me spawn control c and control n here sometime what happens is let's say return orders one i want to create another view out of this so as you know that we are on the which database we are part of here SQL. we are part of data analyst and inside that these two tables are there orders and your returns okay but when you are accessing this view let's suppose you are on the sql server it is fine suppose let's take this sql server tables are getting Uh, suppose when i go to my azure data bricks or azure data factory so this is a different platform right this is let's say this x number platform try to understand this very carefully okay so your sql server is x and you are accessing on the y so y is my azure data factory or azure data bricks or something else environment where i want to consume this table okay when it go to the y environment which is my azure environment he don't know that sql data analysis what and where is the order table is present you will you will able to know just think like you are on one room and you are on the second room what is happening on the one room how you will know without taking the reference of that room right making sense this question is is clear first of all yes sir so whenever you are creating a view or creating a store procedure also we need to define the database first which database it should be okay so i need to give before creating of your uh, creating of the view here right i need to give huge database and to give a database name huge database then i need to give the name of this database first sql data analysis in that sense it will be whenever this code will execute right it will make sense that first it will go use the database then the code will execute so that inside that tables are available on that and the, from the y platform i can use or access this view that makes sense is that makes sense to you yes sir and yes. why it is giving an error here if you see it is giving an error right the red line red lines one second so here what is saying that this first line the creation of the view should be the first line of the code okay that's why the error is coming in sql server here okay but as per my code this should also should be the first line because first i want to use the database then i need to create the view so it is saying as a conflict of interest they are saying that this is this should be my first line he is saying this should be my first line so to avoid that after you use database i will use a keyword called go when you use the go what happen is this will create a different batch this is one batch sorry where i was yeah yeah sorry so this is your first batch batch number 
and on the batch number one this is my first statement and after the go when you declare the go it will create another batch and on the second batch this is my first one and this will work in this way okay so you will when you go to this one it will give you and i will show you this example with a statement let's go to the table you have created n number of tables right on your database let's go to any table whichever you created and right click on this table and script table create okay script table let's create let's try that just taking it see how it is it is creating so it is saying that huge sql database then it is saying go and this part is not that important we can remove it this part but it is using the way i have used it right use your database then go then create it so this is your always you should do like that so use the database then go then your create view whatever you want to use it to use it so that what happen is whenever you are consuming this on the y platform then the first statement will execute this okay use database only i think how the syntax would be oh yeah that's it actually and you can not database sorry guys use the database name only and go the new green make sense any questions on this <coughs> do you have any questions um so when you are working in the same database you don't need to give this right every time you need to give it because i will tell an example why it is required first of all when you are creating a view on the real time you have also will not have the rights to create your own view as well only this is really required let me explain you this so we have in real time how it will works guys we have a dev environment then we have a uat environment then will be broadened it will not a single environment dev is the where you are developing things okay UAT for the user acceptances and prod is the final one. In the Dev database, there could be a chance that you will have a uh, rights to create the view. But in the neither in the UAT, neither in the prod. Suppose you have created one view and you want to move that code to the prod environment. That job needs to be done by the DBA only in the real time. And DBA don't know what exactly they need to do it you need to give the code to them so this code you need to give to them that boss create execute this so they will just execute this on the prod database so if you don't give them the database how they will come to know that this table is part of the sql data in this do, do they will not come to know is it possible just think like that you are giving a person a code saying that boss execute it and he is saying that i am not able to access the table so you, you are not sure that which database is part of right so you need to give the proper code to them to execute it so that time these are all required even this code when you are executing outside of your sql server also it is required so it is a good practice whenever you are writing the view when you are writing the store procedure use this statement use database go then your statements this is very much important okay okay sir. did it make sense yes sir okay okay when now, you execute this code what will happen uh, nothing so, it will it will create an, another view view written orders okay. one let's execute it and we'll have a two views now okay now two views okay yeah it's not refreshed let me refresh it yeah see two views are there right uh -huh. 
correct yeah okay. got it. any questions on the view are you good very simple thing nothing to do just do a practice whenever you are using this use database whether you are on the database no database doesn't matter but use the database then go then write your statement do a proper syntax format so it will be easier for you so okay. now, now we created the view uh, how to access it select select from the view normal after creation of the view it's a normal thing select nothing there after that it's very simple how so you're select. using the handling yeah how so, you how you're tackling the table how you're using the table how you are doing the joints everything same nothing nothing extra so that which means the vw underscore return underscore orders one will be the from where we have to select correct that's obviously that's the case why vw because this is a abbreviation view. we are using for the view okay so now i think i'm where i'm writing all the things where is my notes i have saved the notes right yes Do if you expand save? i guess you will get to see because it is a small window it is not to be seen if you expand the window make it a bigger no, window you'll get up, no, up name this one no there is nothing no it, you will get it when you expand it sometimes expand the window no there, is, no, there is no code here i think uh, one second i got the point Fine, fine. Mm. Should be the ten notes, right? The eleven notes, sorry. Oh, this much only I oh okay. Let me copy paste there things which is required i think from there after that we have no anything we don't have okay then oh, this is fine that's much is required okay yes okay now let's try to understand let me don't stop it the last part Oh, it is there here only this day hmm. oh, it was under that okay fine i have given this okay now let's discuss about i'll create another notes for this this is a separate thing i will take it this is called your store procedure so uh, i was thinking of like winding up the store procedure today itself but i will take another class tomorrow for the store procedure because few things i can't skip it that is required so tomorrow first half i'll take the i'll start the store procedure today first half i will take few things on the store procedure tomorrow and tomorrow itself i'll start the python as well. so let's discuss about the store procedure so what is the store procedure here let me save this file first of all this one i want to separate i want to store it so actually store procedure is nothing but it's a group of the equal statements group of sql statement okay then for the speed and the accuracy so group of sql statement can be anything sql statement can be insert delete update select delete update anything you can use inside your uh, your inside your sql statements is a group of sql statements and that can be used for your speed and and for your accuracy okay? so very simple okay first of all let's try to create a short procedure as you know that i will use my the proper syntax now okay used my sql data analyst my database name then I'll write go, then I will create the store procedure. How to take the create procedure? I'll say create, okay? Then procedure, I can write completely the procedure like this. Create procedure or I can write proc also. This fine, anything is fine. But usually we'll use the proc one. Proc means the procedure. Create procedure, then procedure name, okay? So let's take SP. I will take a name called, store procedure called the SP. Say underscore return orders. Let me copy paste that this one. And this I required actually. Let's I'll take the same SQL only. Okay. Then add this right. Okay. And 
I can have two blocks. This I will explain you tomorrow everything. But I will have a one block that is called my begin block. I can write a begin block. This is not compulsory, but it is required to understand. And it will be the end. So in the begin block and end block, why it is required? Begin block, end block. Because suppose you want to execute two queries, two queries on a same procedure, then it should be inside the begin and end. So what does it mean? I can start another begin here and I can start another end in between I can put another SQL rules select star from let's take returns so in this case your begin and end block is very much required why you understand right so one part is this query and one part will be this query. so you can have any number of blocks inside that if you want to execute multiple sql statement then this would be start with the begin and end with the end making sense any questions up to here are you good yeah no i'm not executing i'm, I'm creating a very simple thing now now i will execute this this part that's it now this is successfully created now here I'll come to the advantage. You can ask me that I can create this as a view also and why I will create a store procedure out of this. I'll come to that. Don't worry. Okay. But where you will get this information? Let's first refresh this. When you expand your database, right? You need to go to your program availability folder. This folder. Expand it. Then there will be a store procedure. Expand it. Then if you see, there is a store procedure already written called SP then orders. This is just now a created. Okay. And I can't do select star from my store procedure. It's not a table. It's not like this is block of codes, right? So I need to execute it to get this information. Okay. So uh, there are a couple of ways we can do that. The first of all way is to, the best way to do that is to execute it. Either you can say execute or exact. Anything is fine. EXCUT complete statement you can write or exec also you can write okay then you can write your store position okay then you run it you get the exact result whichever is required right if that makes sense we'll come to know we'll come to understand that uh, if the same thing can be done with the view and why you required uh, the store position that is part of this one the speed and accuracy and another way is like we can do any statement store procedure can be used for insert delete update which are we which will not do in the view we can perform anything inside the store okay so these are the advantages we'll come to know but you understand what is store procedure and how to execute it any questions are you guys there yes, yes from it yes got the point right let me save this file yes yeah so this is a very simple store procedure i created so tomorrow i will start with some parameters and how to execute this some examples i will take it so that you will be better understanding the store procedure so the store procedure and the views are very much important for the data engineering profile because the select statement which you know that you can fit it into that code here the logic wise anything you can fit it inside this code to execute it okay yeah so i think i'm done for today